I had never really worked, as I said. And we were in Europe having a great time. And uh, then Diana discovered she was pregnant. And we were on our way to Kathmandu at the time. And I'm thinking, well, you don't want to have your first child, perhaps, in Kathmandu general. Maybe you come back. So we came back uh, here with no money. Literally landed with, I think we had like a dime, you know, or a quarter. And we got a drive-away car, you know, where you can drive someone's car across country. And we drove that car, and we had my father gave us his Shell credit card, which you could use at Copper Penny restaurants in those days. So we come across, and we had Uber with us. We had our dog with us while we traveled through Europe. And uh, we came out to California, and then we were looking to Berkeley, and we were looking for a way to make a living where we could still be together all day, every day. And uh, we had the idea to open a daycare center. And we got a big old Victorian, rented a big old Victorian there. And downstairs was the daycare center, and upstairs was, the, was our place. And we called it the Organic Daycare Center, because you have to know your audience. And, uh, and our motto was, rain or shine, we take your kid on a trip every day. And that was really true. We had a B VW bug. We took the back seat out. Think about it now. We had like eight kids in the back seat of that car with no seat belts. Yikes. But uh, we, so, and our older daughter, Shauna, uh, was born into the daycare center. And uh, that's a grueling job. That is a grueling job. Whatever we pay preschool people, it's not enough. And we did it for about two years. And then we just couldn't do it anymore because you, you realize <laughs> that you can only relate to other uh, preschool providers, you know, daycare providers, because you, you don't know anything other in the culture. All you know are like the wheels on the bus. These are the songs you can sing. You know, I'm a little teapot. You know, the classics. But you can't talk about anything else. And, you know, the... The, when you have it in your house like that, then the ki they stop drop, dropping the kids off earlier, picking up later. We, we didn't exist. We were just Gary and Diana, you know, and with two people, they could drop their kids with us. And we had uh, 12 kids max because we couldn't do more than that. And um, it was great. And Shauna, Shauna, as I say, Shauna, when she walks into a room, expects people to burst into applause because, you know, those kids always did when she came down. And um, after about two years of that, couldn't take it anymore, and Diana went back to college to get her master's. Diana's right around that genius category, you know? So she went back to get her master's. I had never graduated college. So I was just tagging along to take care of the baby and Ubu. Um, and at the last minute, it was San Diego State College University. And at the last minute, I thought, I'll just take this writing class, you know? I mean, I need 100 units anyways. So I mean, here's three I can get, you know? And the teacher was, a, uh, uh, just by the gods, you know, the grace of the gods, the teacher was a guy, Nate Monister, who was a professional writer, who had written a movie called That Touch of Mink with Cary Grant and uh, received an Academy Award nomination for that and had been past president of the Writers Guild. And he was down there just for those six months on this kind of distinguished visiting lecturer uh, series. Also in this class, by the way, was Kathy Kennedy, the Academy Award uh, producer. So... Um, but I'm 31, Kathy's like 19 at that point, just to get that clear. So um, I take the class, and this guy is great, you know, but he, so the assignment is to do a TV commercial. And I don't want to write a TV commercial, so I went up, I said, look, do you mind if I could do something else? I'm not trying to get out of the assignment, but I don't want to write about a TV commercial, you know. I have something I might want to write. He goes, go ahead. So I think had he been another guy, a different kind of teacher, or more, you know, more defensive, whatever you want, just go and write that. That'd be great. So I sat down to write. And I'd never really written before. And it was really scary. First of all, I could put myself right back in the Village Gate. I started to write about that time. Um, and I was right back there. And then I saw I could remember conversations and what people were wearing. And, and I sat and it very quickly wrote about 25 pages, you know. And I, whoa. So I hand it in. And uh, we can't afford a telephone at this point. So I don't have a phone. But I get a phone call at my neighbor's. And he goes, you got to come in. You know, so I go over there. And it's Nate Monaster. And he goes, you have to come in and see me. I go, all right, well, he goes, no, come now. Oh, so I come back to Diana. I go, you, I did something wrong again. I mean, some guys shouldn't be in college. You know what I mean? It's just not for me, whatever. And uh, so I go to see Nate Monaster, and he looks at me, and he's got my stuff on his desk, and he says, um, he says you're a writer. He goes, I have, I have nothing to teach you. I don't want you in this class, you know? It's a unique voice. It's it's compelling, you know. And I go, whoa, we we getting get me excited because I'm gonna get an A in the class. I mean, I'm 31. I have kids. He goes, although it would be my first A. Still, what are you saying? He said, well, you could make your living writing TV, you know, movies. What's your favorite television shows? I said, well, I don't have a television. We couldn't afford a television set. I haven't seen television in 
years. I would tell them, you know, we, we're mostly getting stoned at night. I don't have, you know, we, we don't watch TV, we read or whatever, you know. And uh, he said, well, you could, so we go, uh, there's a TV, there's a motel going out of business in Pacific Beach, California there. We get a TV set for $25, big black and white set. And we plug it in and Diana is standing to my left and I watch this show called Get Christy Love with Teresa Graves, uh, created by George Kiergo, and who's also president of the Writers Guild. And uh, I watch it for about five minutes, seven, eight minutes, and I turn to Dan and I said, I could do that. I, I think I could do that. I could write the next act here, whatever it is. So uh, Nate Monaster got me, started getting me scripts of shows, and I was fortunate uh, that there were great comedies on. There was MASH, All in the Family, Mary, Barney Miller. I mean, there were great shows. So I start watching these shows, and they're, they're great. You know, and I start writing these spec scripts, and Nate's showing me the form, and he's giving me notes. And then he sends it to an agent. This first agent is a guy named Mike Wise. He's now a manager. or a, He was with a company called CMA at the time. It was before the merger of ICM and IFA. So CMA. And uh, hitchhike up for this meeting with Mike Wise. <laughs> I have to come up a day early because I couldn't risk not getting a ride, you know. Uh, and I slept on the floor of this guy's house and go to the meeting and he likes it. So now I have an agent, you know. I submitted a spec uh, something, you know. I don't even remember what it was. So now he tells me some things. I go back and my first lesson in show business, Mike Wise gets fired within the week. <laughs> so I lost my agent. But he said, before he, he said, there's a guy. And he, he, he said, there's a guy I know starting out. And I sent the stuff to him. And uh, so very sweet of Mike. And, um, and this guy now, he's got a young guy named Jim Preminger, who's uh, up here. And he's opening the literary department of Bressler, Wolf, Coda, and Livingston, which is a firm in Beverly Hills. Young actors, mostly they have, they have a young actor, Jack Nicholson, they're very high on. And Jim is going to be their literary guy. And he calls me up, and he likes the stuff, you know. So I have to hitchhike up to see him again. And Jim is a, an atypical agent. He was a political science major at the University of Chicago. He's very, uh, so he's very soft-spoken, and he's very tall. Most agents, he's about 6'4". Most agents are like 4'9". And uh, basically, he said, oh, I, I'm going to represent you. So uh, it was really interesting. But I said, well, I can't come up here now because I had to wait for Diana to finish her master's degree on her way to her PhD, which she, which she has. And, um, but meanwhile, I'm writing. And that was it. I was happy writing. I think I, I was successful in my mind now because I was writing and I, for the first time, could replace sports as a passion. And the same things would happen where you, you defeat time and space. Everything goes away. You sit there and my wife would say, you've been writing for 11 hours, you know, and you'd have no sense of it. You know, um, it was thrilling. So I, I was excited just that I was doing this. No one else knew I had made this decision to be a writer except me and Jim Preminger, but we were ready to go.